Welcome to Hopeside Vespers. Thank you for joining us. I hope you had a good week. We're glad that we are able to make it thus far. We thank God for all that he has been doing through and for us for all this time. There's no doubt that so much is happening, but uh, it is a blessing to be able to come together week after week at the beginning of another rest day or rest and restoration. We're glad to have the friends and well-wishers of uh, brother, doctor and pastor Sohas Sable. And we will get to know the work that God has uh, for all of us through him. Let's have an opening song. It's called What a Friend We Have in Jesus by Voice of Praise. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer.
That was a great song to be reminded of. And now we will have Brother John Hivale offer the opening prayer. Our merciful and gracious Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us all together at the beginning of another Sabbath day. We also thank you for keeping us safe giving every person, every family, everyone that everybody knows to uh, blessings, safety, and providing all our needs. Bless us now as we continue into this ceremony. And we would ask you that you would also be with the speaker as he brings the message to us. Let him be touched with the Holy Spirit. Throughout this Sabbath day, we can be with those who are worshiping you on this uh, Sabbath day around the world. We know there's lots of problems in, in the world. There's a lot of sadness, grief, destruction, you name it. We ask you that hear the prayer of those who cry out to you. And also at this time, be with those who are getting to know you. Let the Holy Spirit impress upon their hearts. When your son appears, if it is your will, help each one that has called on your name and followed you to be accepted in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. We will hear a special song called Mendes Broken Heart by the group Life Breakthrough. Broken pieces, broken wings Jesus smell my broken dreams Empty space, ruined by doubts Jesus meant this broken heart Tears within, tears like rain Jesus meant my endless pain Fill the space, take the doubts Jesus meant this broken heart Jesus meant this broken dreams Hear my plea, O oh wounded we The down for a brand new star. Jesus meant this broken heart. Hold this vessel and purify. Jesus bless your name on high. My new spirit magnifies. Oh, sweet Jesus, reign so high. Jesus, mend this broken dreams. Hear my plea, O oh, wounded wings. Take the down for a brand new star. Jesus, mend this broken heart. Jesus meant this broken dreams Hear my plea, O oh, wounded wings Take the down for a brand new star Jesus meant this broken heart Jesus meant this broken dreams Hear my plea, O oh, wounded wings Take the down for a brand new star Jesus meant this broken heart Jesus meant this broken heart 
his broken dreams Hear my plea, O oh wounded wings Take the down for a breath It was a beautiful song, Jesus Mend these broken dreams in our lives. And at this time, we will have uh, Mrs. St. Charles read the scripture reading for tonight's meditation, found in 2 Corinthians 4, 1 to 10. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 to 10. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have uh, renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by a manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the gods of this age has blinded, who do not believe, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not uh, preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus sake for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, but we have this treasure to earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. May God bless the portion of scripture read. Thank you, Mrs. Helen, for reading that. When I asked uh, Pansy, who has uh, introduced me to our speaker, doctor and pastor Sohas Sable, who was arranged by her sister, Sohasmi, uh, I asked about uh, how you know, I should introduce him. And so uh, Dr. So Haas was uh, gracious enough to give his entire CV, so to speak. So uh, when I went through it, I was indeed very impressed and uh, uh, glad to be able to meet such a man. And uh, just so you know uh, what kind of a background he has, uh, let me share the screen. You may not be able to read everything that is there. I will simply scroll it so you know what kind of a man uh, we are going to hear today. I frequently ask people to introduce themselves in about three, four lines. Uh, but uh, you know, here is uh, Dr. Sable, who has uh, shared uh, his background. And he is indeed uh, very well read and studied, educated. He is a social scientist, educator, theologian, uh, got many degrees and awards. And so uh, if it's okay, I will share briefly, uh, you know, what he's about. And so you can see there, a uh, lot of education, 
lot of service. And we are indeed glad to have someone like that giving uh, God's work today. So obviously you will not be able to read all this because I'm scrolling fast. So what I thought of doing was uh, actually summarizing everything. And um, so I got two pages, so I'll share that also. So this one, you can see all the ways and places he has been. Uh, Dubai, India, he is from Maharashtra, of course, and uh, all the accomplishments he has uh, achieved. We are indeed glad to be able to see and share uh, an account of all that he has done. Hope that's okay with uh, you, Dr. Sable, that I'm sharing these things. Uh, there are some things that are obviously private, so uh, I'm not sharing it uh, slow that, so that uh, that will not be compromised. And uh, so let me introduce, I actually had a two page uh, version too, but uh, since you already saw all that I shared, let me just uh, summarize all this, uh, all his background in this way. Uh, Dr. Suhas was educated in uh, a Seventh-day Adventist uh, secondary school. He completed his ICSC in an Adventist higher secondary school. And he also completed his arts uh, degree, I think, in Bhopal, Indore, in 1984. He has a BA in English and Geography, which is an Osmania University, BA in English and Social Science, MA in English Literature, uh, from Madhuraj Kamaraj University. Uh, it says DDE, that's a doctorate. And uh, he has a Bachelor of uh, in Divinity from Delhi. And he has a Master's in Divinity from Andhra Pradesh. And PhD in English Literature from the USA while he was in Dubai, learning online. Uh, so he has 30 years experience in uh, working in Dubai and India, excluding five years, or rather including five years experience as a principal. And uh, he was uh, also a board member uh, for Bhopal, or a board examiner of Bhopal and, uh, and Mumbai of education. So he also has uh, three to four years of uh, experience as a college lecturer and uh, also in the University of Mumbai. And so we are so glad to have uh, uh, you, Dr. Suhas. We look forward to hearing you. May God be with you as uh, you enrich us and expand our understanding uh, for today. So you're more than uh, welcome to come back again in the future. I'm sure you have a lot to share. Uh, there's a slide I prepared that uh, I asked uh, uh, Ms. Nancy to, uh, Pansy to share. You can see that as well. And so uh, uh, we will hear from Dr. Sohas uh, now with the sermon entitled, Why Christ? The time is all yours, Dr. Sohas. Uh, thank you so much, praise the Lord. And I'm very grateful for the introduction which is given about me. Uh, but let me tell you frankly, I always uh, say that I'm a, a big zero <laughs> in my life because uh, front of God, in front of the Holy Scriptures, uh, we are all uh, children, we are all infants. And I praise the Lord and uh, I'm very grateful to Madam Suhasni who has given me this uh, privilege of speaking and uh, I really am very grateful to her. My teacher is here, uh, Madam Helen Charles, I think she's my, she, she's here and uh, she's my teacher and I am privileged. And I feel at solace to speak for you from the word of the Lord. Thank you. The topic which I have chosen today is about the life of Christ, which we all know very well. 
and Christ in us. Today, what we see is the need of Jesus Christ to the world, to the nations, to the countries. We are in need of Christ. We have felt it. We have witnessed it. We have been witnessing it. And therefore, I had chosen few texts from the Holy Bible. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Genesis. The book of Genesis, which we have been reading for a number of times. And we all know in the Genesis chapter 1, 2, 3, we see the wonderful creation week. Yes, vespers for us, early morning Sabbaths for us. It is to rejuvenate ourselves and think about the Garden of Eden, think about the creation of God and think as how we are a small part of it. So when we see the creation week, yes, since our childhood, my teachers, our teachers, your teachers, we have been learning in the beginning, God creating the heaven and earth. We have learned so many times. But there is a deep meaning to this creation week. First of all, though on the first day there, is, there, was, there had been light, light on the second day, the firmament and the se segregation of the waters. Now, what we see that this has all deep meaning. When we say about the firmament, we say, we study that this firmament was heaven. And what we say that the lower part, the segregated part was the waters. Now we reticulate this words with Revelation chapter 7. When we go to Revelation chapter 7, we see that these waters had to be destructed, the angels, by the three angels' message, by the prophecy. Because the waters were full of sin and the waters refer to the earth. And then in the, in the revelation, when we read and when we contemplate in 7, 8 also, 10 also and uh, 13 also, which I have been reading for several times, it all indicates water. And from the water, we find that the word, the word was drenched with the blood. Now, when we study or when we know people around us, because we are all Christians, we are all Seventh-day Adventists. I am also happy that so many people, my friends, must be connected from the different parts. I am very grateful to them for connecting. 
so they may be hindus they may be muslims it doesn't matter but they are my friends so if they are here i am very grateful to them when we study different religion when we study different type of concepts we have come to conclusion that a sacrifice is required something had gone wrong something started in a pretty good way but something has gone wrong and that something has gone wrong we all come to know from the garden of eden that something which is wrong it needed blood it needed the sacrifice of blood the sacrifice of man and no man could give life for others what we see in the garden of eden when eve hearken to the voice of lucifer we see that when she was pleased with the fruits she again took the fruits to adam and when god had interrogated them god she is the one who gave me the fruits she said lord let for second enemy of thine the serpent has given me he has bluffed me he has baffled me so the blame came that means nobody had the what we can say the power or we can say the guts to give life sin was committed and when the sin was committed obviously for that righteous man in the sight of god the sacrifice of purity had to be done and therefore right from the beginning right from the very genesis and throughout our bible till our predictions of revelation we see jesus christ there is no literature without jesus christ there is no sciences without jesus christ yes my son is a mechanical engineer but he is a science student sometimes he argues with me because there are some people there are some people from the science stream who still don't believe in god who still don't believe in jesus christ but i say to them verily that there will be circumstances when you have to strongly believe in christ believe in our jesus christ why christ it is because in almost all the scriptures in almost all the religions there is the indication of sacrifices maybe the names may be dif- different when i was in dubai i used to have conversations with our uh, muslim people and they used to you know we used to talk very nicely friendly and then we used to talk, discuss about religion now the islamic laws they say that without christ we are not called as muslims then i told when you are having christ why don't you follow him and then that the matter comes about being the pagambar and so on but believe me that in no other religion there had been the sacrifice 
of the blood only by Christ. And that was the plan of salvation which we have from the very Genesis till our revelation. That was the plan of salvation. I was so happy the other day when I was listening to social media. I was very happy to listen to Mr. Arvind Kejriwan. He is also invited in the group. I do not know whether he has joined or maybe some other people have joined. Our brother uh, Ravin Wilson has joined from Delhi. He mentioned about Jesus Christ. He confessed, he admitted that like Christ, I would like to serve the people. I was so thrilled, even when I was hearing the chief minister of Maharashtra, Mr. Udav Thakri. Because where he dwells, he dwells with the Christian community also, with the Muslim community also. And so he says, I know Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. And I want you to pray for Jesus Christ so that this pandemic will go away. Yes, the blood of Christ, the sacrifice of, of Christ has cleansed us. Once again, once again I say that means this sort of pandemic was there during the times of Moses. Once again, God has proved that through my son, through my beloved son, we are all cleansed. We are all happy. We are all living. So be it the political ground, be it the literature, or be it the daily life, everywhere Christ is. Why Christ? Again we go historically. When we speak historically, we see the great man in India, Mahatma Gandhi. He used to often say, if somebody is slapping on this cheek, you can offer your other cheek. This is nothing. But from the Holy Bible, it is nothing but the principles of Jesus Christ, which made him great. Because of that philosophy, he was made great. We also take the example of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, such a great man, he was the chairman of the drafting committee. And he paved the path to the Indians and also to the world. And because of that constitution we are running today, he too studied about Christ. He too believed in Christ. He too adopted that system of serving for the downtrodden. Be it Bapu on the other side, working for the Harijans, Hari, Jans, Hari means God, Jans means people, the downtrodden. And Dr. Ambedkar here, again for the downtrodden, the scheduled tribes, SC, ST, OBC and so many, so many. And both of them, we see how great they had become. Why Christ? In their life. And when they really studied. When they really knew. They were able to tell. They were able to tell the Britishers. That this is not the philosophy of Christ. To launch imperialism. In fact, it is love. The entire gospel 
of Christ is nothing but love. It is centralized by love. And so they were able to tell the Britishers and they were able to understand. They were able to know. I am so happy. I studied in such a wonderful school which was established in 1919 and my teacher is here. I am so proud of her. Got to give her good life. And I was a small kid. I used to listen to when Suhasni discussed with me oh what a privilege it was. See the world is round. What we have studied, what we have done, it all has come back. And in this rotation, in this life, if we do not reflect Jesus Christ, then our lives are useless. There is one thing from the Holy Scriptures which was read by my teacher. But why? Why are we suffering today? Why there is trouble today? Why there is pandemic today? Why there is corruption today? Why people are trying to change the constitution of India? Why, why uh, uh, United States has taken back from Afghanistan, from Kabul? Why? And when we all contemplate on this scenario, we come to conclusion that the world is bifurcated only with two thoughts. One, in favor of Christ. And the second is the Antichrist. The Holy Scriptures, the revelations tell us that how the Antichrist will be there, how the false preachers will be there, and but how ultimately the Lord is going to reign. The Lord is going to crush the serpent's head. He is able to curse him to a thousand years. I forgot my son had drafted the uh, 6,000 years on the whiteboard, but uh, he could not do it. I wanted to present it, but I could not do it, unfortunately. But next time, if you have a privilege, I will definitely do it. And when we come back again to our holy scriptures, is because we have hid the word of the Lord. We have hid Christ. We are not bringing someone to Christ. I remember the small lad, a school boy, and I discussed with uh, Suhasni also. If Pastor Anandra, whenever he used to come on the week of the week of prayer, he used to have number of people confessing. And he used to have number of students for the admission in the school. I am sure Madam Charles will ex agree with me. And that was a real missionary zeal. And that is how Jesus Christ has reached the remote parts like Gangapur, Rezapur, Aurangabad, Bhendara. So many parts, Manmar. And because of that sweet work, because of that wonderful missionary zeal, what we see, there are so many leaders, so many good people. The word of God. Somewhere, we have stopped to share about the word of God. 
like Pastor Anand Rao? Have we prepared someone for baptism? I'm not only talking about Pastor Anand Rao. I'm talking about the zeal in each one of us. Have we ever done anything for our maid servant or man servant or their children? Have we educated them? Have we told something to the about the Lord, about the Lord, about our holy scriptures? It was told to me. I embraced it. I inculcated it. And now I am also parting with it or imparting it. This is nothing, but whatever we have taken, we have to give. In the school, when I teach, or maybe sometimes when I'm a principal, you know, I tell teachers recently, the 12th results we had to declare because of the general promotion which was there. Teachers, sir, how to give them 70 marks and 75? I told teachers. Keep cool. We have orders. What we are doing? You are not working hard. Whatever you have studied, you are giving it back to the society again. No matter what your difficulties are, but this is a matter of fact. And they are so happy. And so they so they happily they do it. And I am proud that I declared the uh, 12th result of Maharashtra board, Washi. Madam must be knowing it. I had to go so many times to Washi board. And when I used to go, I used to remember my teacher also. Because she was the principal of uh, Seventh-day Adventist school there. Anyway, so coming down, what we see that why Christ, somewhere the scriptures we have stopped. And the scriptures are read. That when we stop about the scriptures, then the stagnancy comes in our life. The stagnancy comes in our government. Everything becomes stagnant. People don't know what to do. People all go to then different, different worships and so on. I had a privilege of being the uh, officer to tackle about the uh, uh, denominations. Denominations means like uh, uh, the Wilson College you must have heard or maybe like Nagar College you must have heard or Hume High School you must have heard. So there is a tussle between the Church of North India and between the UCNI. So they say it be belongs to us and they say it belongs to us. And uh, there were about uh, 32 lawyers given with me and I used to supervise them, uh, monitor their work and allot them work and so on. But afterwards I thought, this is not my world. This is not my place. This is not the thing which I am born for. I may be hungry in my house, but I am with my Jesus. And I am so happy. That we all of us are blessed. We are all better than what we were. And that needs no further explanations. When I used to, when I was a student, teacher and a student, I used, I used to be at Hyderabad. And that time, I think uh, recently, uh, that time, just in those recent times, Dr. Chiran had become the president of the Southern Asia Division. And then I, went with along with him to the chief minister of uh, Andhra Pradesh during that a small boy I was just studying for BA degree or something like that. And then Dr. Chiran, you know, he used to declare that we want the Sabbath day to be off. The Saturday should be a non-working day. I do not know, but still what happened afterwards in Andhra Pradesh, but really Dr. Chiran uh, did for the community. The Holy Scriptures indicate us that if the Holy Scriptures are stopped, if the sacrifice of Christ is not presented to the world, to anyone, he may be an auto rickshaw guy, or he may be a uh, cab driver, or he may be any, uh, any anyone, 
it doesn't mean that we have to take the bible and preach because in this country we cannot even when i was in dubai pastor ravin wilson had told me that okay we can uh, establish our church i told no it's not that easy when we travel or when we go on a particular visa we are supposed to do on work for that company or for that organization only things are very difficult india is a democratic country and we all are able to preach the word of god for which we are grateful and the same notions are there in the united states also and though there are some difficulties and so on but god is taking care of this nation god is taking care of the people because there is christ in them they are reflecting jesus christ in them so when we refer to our topic why christ because he has shown us the light he is the light of the world he is the lamb who sacrificed he was there in the very genesis he is he cometh again in the book in the revelation he is the alpha and omega and i need not to teach you about having christ but i need to remind you that we have to tell about jesus christ to others we have to bring souls to our church we have to educate someone who is needy we have to tell them the way we have to pave the path of his righteousness we have to be like pastor anand rao we have to be like k bhaskar rao or maybe so many other missionaries who used to come for the week of prayer uh, pastor ohol used to come for week of prayer uh, pastor mahapure used to come for the week of prayer i remember so many people when the time they come okay there will be number of uh, students joining in our school and they they used to never know my teacher is there but we came to know lasal go school a wonderful school what i studied i don't think i studied in university or anything like that because whatever i wanted to study i studied there and therefore i went on serving i went on giving them people whatever i got degrees are there in the files testimonies are there everywhere but the word of the lord in our heart and the word of the lord has to be propagated it cannot be stopped so i appeal to you especially my friends from uh, uh, dubai uh, my friends from uh, uh, philippines if they have joined and also uh, some of my indian friends whom i have disturbed early morning that uh, read about christ you may be a non christian or you may be a non seventh day adventist it doesn't matter you are my friend you know how sohas is and therefore i have invited you for this meeting i'm not speaking to my uh, teacher or my uh, people but mostly the ones who had uh, ones who have joined here i'm speaking to them that if you have not read about christ read about jesus christ if you do not know text to the people let them know that you want to know the christ and when you know about christ you have to tell about christ to other souls there was a time when i was studying in literature that uh, uh, in uh, hamlet by william shakespeare uh, the pri- prince hamlet prince hamlet he wants to go and uh, kill claudius who was his uncle and who had killed his own father and married his own mother claudius known to be as the villain in william shakespeare's play 
And when he goes, maybe on the castle on the first floor or something like that, he finds him praying. Claudius was praying. And then he comes down, Prince Hamlet, young one, young prince, stout man. And he says, I don't want to kill him. Because while he's in prayer, he's a villain. And while he's in his prayer, if I kill him, he will have a place in heaven. That means our Holy Bible is reflected in great literature. There's one more right or essay type, I think by Hopkins, the wind over. It's about the wind over, the bird, the magnetic bird, which flies high up at the zenith in the sky. And this bird fights against all the odds. And then the writer comes back, Hopkins, comes back to Christ. Seeing Christ fighting all the odds. It was not an easy life for Jesus Christ. Today what we say, okay, love, peace, grace, compassion, okay, we say very easily. But that life was not so much for Christ. Jesus Christ had to fight with all the odds. For whom? For his parents? No. For whom? For his family members? No. For, for John the Baptist? No. It was only for the Gentiles. It was only for the people. It was only for the people. Not for any religious group. Not for Christians. I remember Professor Lal Kaka saying at Spicer College when I was there for a short time. Saying Jesus Christ did not write any book. But in every library, there will be a book of Jesus Christ. So coming back, Jesus Christ, he had to fight against all the odds, the wind over. We also know about Santiago in one of the literature. A fisherman who combats and in the same way that rigorous fight Jesus Christ had to be. And at last he submitted to the will of God. That is that is the sacrifice which Christ did. That is the sacrifice actually which is indicated ever since Genesis and till, even till times of Revelation. I have told you little, very little bit, but when you read, when you contemplate on it, you'll come to know about it. You'll come to know what the uh, waters are indicating. You'll come to know what the... Uh, even our vegetation is uh, indica indicating. We also see the burning of the green vegetation in Revelation reflected. Is reflected. Means whatever was there, which had come in iniquity, in sinfulness, it was being destroyed or we can see it was being triumphed by the sacrifice of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that makes Jesus Christ as God himself. Hopkins really says that his sacrifice for the world, his fight for the world, that itself makes Jesus as God himself. May God bless you as you are entering the Sabbath in the United States of America. I also pray, we also pray, we should say, for the President of the United States of America, 
for taking care of the Americans and also the different citizens from the different parts of the world who are uh, the immigrants in the USA. We also pray for our country, India, and also for Maharashtra, especially our Mumbai city. It is in big trouble. Uh, and uh, whenever the chief minister is uh, doing something uh, noble, you know, the opposition come politically and so on. So we are also going to pray uh, for them. And uh, God bless you all. And thank you so much, Swasni, for giving me this privilege. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Dr. Sable, for that very wonderful, challenging and encouraging message and for sharing the testimony, a testimony of uh, how our forefathers, our fathers had that kind of a zeal, or the missionaries that came through fire and flood. And for such a time as this, and so why Christ? Because you said without Christ, everything will stagnate. <laughs> and without Christ, everything will just dissolve. And as we are seeing, this is the result of what has been sown that, you know, we don't follow Christ. The pandemics, all these things that are happening, this has been predicted. So thank you for challenging us. We will have a song, a special song as our closing. May you be blessed by it. It is called Trust and Obey by the Fountain View Academy.
It was a beautiful song that we sang and heard many times. And now, Dr. Sohas Sable will offer the closing prayer. I will, on my behalf, I will request uh, Pastor Peterson to offer the word of prayer. Pastor Peterson, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I request Pastor Peterson. I request Pastor Peterson. Thank you yes, so much sir. for the yes, privilege. Uh, yeah. Let's bow down our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our most kind, gracious, merciful Father in heaven, we are so glad to see this Sabbath morning. Dear Lord, we are so grateful to Thee and thankful to Thee for Your marvelous blessings upon us. Dear Lord, we thank You for the message that we have that has been heard we believe dear lord you have spoke to us you have shared your words through your servant dr suhas sable sir we are thankful to thee for your great blessings and proclaim and the message which has been pro proclaimed why Christ in us? Dear Lord, because Thou art the art Alpha and Omega, dear Lord, You are the light of this world. You are our Redeemer. You are our Sustainer. And dear Lord, we need to show You in this world. Since we have heed You, in this world. We are so sorry for that, dear Lord. We are asking your pardon. So to forgive us that we have hidden you from this world till today. Now help us today and bless us so that we may show our Christ to this world. Dear Lord, the blood you shed was necessary for us to cleanse our, from our heart sins. And uh, that dear Lord, you have given this in free to us. So we may understand the value of your blood and get the salvation through your grace which we have received. We are thankful to thee for giving us this privilege to, to proclaim and to participate in your people. Bless us throughout this day, guide us, passion us, hold us, dear Lord, And in this world today we are living, may we show a light to this world in a very special way. Because your second coming is too close. And when thou will come, dear Lord, on the clouds of heaven, may not you see us departed from you, departed from your light, departed from your salvation. Grant us a place in the eternal kingdom because we ask these few verses in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for offering the prayer.
We will uh, meet and greet after a uh, few announcements here. Next week, uh, Elder Charles Danasing from Hyderabad will be speaking next week, which is uh, on September 4. Uh, an edited version of today's uh, Vespers will be available on our YouTube channel. If you go to hopeside.org, you will know more about what we're doing. And we are incredibly grateful for your presence, for your fellowship, so that we can worship together. May God bless all of you, and please stay safe. And at this time, let us meet and greet.